But with straw, one of the big advantages is you can do indoor cultivation and not have to worry as much about sterile conditions. Straw is considered a pretty high carbon and it has a low nutrient content, and so there's not a lot of competitive fungus or molds out there that are interested in beating out your mushrooms uh, and consuming the straw. So with straw, and you could really technically do this with any kind of dry, brittle material like this, uh, what we want to do is shred this to both break down the lignans that are in here that'll block the mycelium from growing, and also to increase the surface area which will help speed up the whole process. So if you look at this, here's our unshredded bale, which has this very waxy coating and is really large and hard to imagine packing into a space efficiently. Versus after we're done shredding, we have this nice material that we can compress and soak and the mycelium can really grow through it rapidly. So there's many ways you could shred the straw. You can sometimes actually buy pre-shredded straw bales. Uh, a chipper shredder is one of the most efficient ways to do it, um, but it can be pricey. Some people will load this into a barrel with a weed whacker and just kind of shred it up that way, which takes a little more time, but is cheaper. So uh, any way you go about it is fine. Uh, but as you scale up, you'll want to think about things that are going to be as efficient as possible. So important if you're working with a chipper shredder or any machinery is that you follow all the manufacturer's instructions and keep your hands clear of the shredding uh, knives in there and that you wear appropriate safety gear safety glasses and a mask and ear protection is really advised. Regardless of the method you use to shred your straw, the next step is to get it into the barrels to soak. It doesn't really matter if you're going to do fermentation or lime or heat pasteurization, this process is pretty much the same. There's really three main ways that we can treat straw for cultivation. Uh, the first is to soak it in water and basically starve the straw of oxygen. Uh, so that's an anaerobic situation and we call this the stinky straw method because it smells pretty bad. And you would soak the straw in water for anywhere from two days to a week, basically until it stinks. Uh, and the time really depends on the time of year and what the ambient temperature is outside. So that can work. Basically it cleans the straw of any competitive organisms and you're good to go. Second method that's most common is to heat the straw in water, so you bring water to uh, somewhere in the range of 140 to 160 degrees. You can do that on a stove top, of course, but at a larger scale, folks often do it in like a 55 gallon drum over a propane burner. And you would heat that straw and keep it at that temperature for a couple hours. You then cool the straw down and then you can inoculate. And so you're basically killing the organisms in that process. The third method is to use hydrated lime and the important thing there is to make sure that it has a, a less than 10% magnesium in its content because otherwise it won't work uh, in this method. And so you soak the straw in lime that raises the pH and basically knocks out a lot of the potential competition and gives the oyster mushrooms a leg up to get started. And so all three of these methods can be employed and you can choose based on your interest in uh, materials, in energy uh, expenditure, in cost, uh, in the type of method that's just going to work best for your operation. So we like to use just pillowcases. These are king-sized flannel pillowcases and we made a little rack for them just to make it easy to load them up. I'll just tie it up with a little zip tie just to hold it closed. So here's our bag, and we'll just throw it in here. So this is hydrated mason's lime. It's uh, gonna vary what you can get locally depending on where the lime is being mined from. So it's basically mined as limestone, it's pulverized, and then it's heated in an autoclave. And so it's a nice thin powder. You wanna be really careful not to get a, a dust plume in your face. I like to wear a mask when I'm handling it and dumping it. And uh, it's also very caustic, meaning it'll suck the moisture out of your skin, so you might want to wear gloves as well. But this is a nice kind of cheap way to, to treat this. And you're also going to need pH test strips, because what you're going to want to do 
is make sure that your pH is at least 10 in order for it to be effective. And that pH is gonna vary depending on the source of your limestone. So we have our bags all packed up with the straw and we're gonna take an old grill cover just to weigh them down. It's good to have something to put some pressure on. So we'll weight that down. And then again, if you were gonna ferment, you would just fill it with water. If you were gonna heat pasteurize, you would put a burner underneath and heat that water up between 140 and 160 degrees for two hours. So you would seal the lid. We're gonna do lime. The biggest thing with the lime is we're gonna mix up hydrated lime in water. And we wanna make sure that the pH is at least 10. So it's alkaline. And so it's helpful to get some of the pH test strips and you make your mixture and just test. So we're in the purple, which is, which is well into our range here. So we should be good. For inoculation, you just need some kind of container to put your straw and your spawn in. Uh, we like to use buckets because we can rewash them and reuse them again. But a lot of people use plastic bags or tubes that they can uh, use once and then and then start over again. And the advantage of that is you don't have to worry as much about contamination. It's really important to keep these nice and clean uh, if you're going to use them again. So we're going to just drill a few holes. Uh, we go. Uh, with about a half inch or so drill bit and we drill our holes about seven inches apart on a bit of a diamond pattern and this is something you can play with the, both the size of the hole and also the spacing will dictate how many clusters of oysters you get and how big they are at the end of the day So if you were using plastic bags, you wouldn't have to do this step, but if we're going to use a reusable container, it's really important to clean it very thoroughly before you inoculate. Uh, so these buckets uh, originally were filled with isopropyl alcohol, so completely clean. It's really important to either buy new buckets or find a source that doesn't have any food product or any kind of residue. You want the cleanest buckets you can start with. And then just being really vigilant about cleaning them out. So what we do is a uh, isopropyl alcohol mix that we'll mix with water and then we'll just scrub everything out, we'll rinse it down and then we'll be good to go. In addition to isopropyl alcohol, you could use vinegar, bleach, any kind of solution that's gonna clean the buckets well. All right, so this is our lime soak and this has been sitting in here for about 16 hours. You can go anywhere from about 16 to 20 hours in the lime. Uh, and so we're going to unpack this and inoculate our buckets. Lime is very caustic, so it'll actually draw a lot of moisture out of your skin. So when you're working with your straw that's been soaking, you want to wear gloves always to protect yourself and as you're packing the buckets. So we're going to drain this, and I just like to kind of set it up on the edge here. And then we'll dump it into a wheelbarrow.
So here's a barrel of uh, lime water that we pulled the straw out of and inoculated earlier today. So this is highly alkaline and if we dump it, it's actually a bit toxic to the soil. So what we're gonna wanna do before we uh, let it go is neutralize it. And the best way to do that is by some kind of citric acid or other acid product. There's uh, products called pH down. And, and then again, test with those test strips to make sure it's neutral, seven or eight pH before you dump it. So it's a really important part of this. Don't dump it until you have that verification, otherwise you might cause some problems downstream. As you're going, uh, isopropyl alcohol or light bleach or vinegar solution really is your friend, and you want to be kind of extra cautious about things, and just think about contamination. So, you know, my gloves got a little dirty, I'm gonna give myself a little spray. The bag itself, we're gonna open that up and we might want to just spray around it, just to kind of kill any remnant molds or bacteria. We even give our buckets a little bit of a spray just to keep them nice and clean. The longer they sit out, the more potential contamination can be introduced. So you wanna wash your buckets and then inoculate them right away. So uh, with our lime, we just wanna make sure it's nice and drained, there's no sitting water. If this was heat pasteurized, we'd wanna actually lay it out on a flatter table and let it cool. Because if it's still steaming and you introduce the mycelium, it'll, it might kill it. So once that's ready, we're just gonna Put a few inches in the bottom of each bucket. And then what's really important before we add the mycelium is to tamp it down. So a brick or a tamper is your friend. You really can't pack it down too much. Packing it down allows the mycelium to easily move through it. If you leave it too loose, then it's gonna have a problem growing rapidly. We're gonna open our spawn. This is a four pound bag and we're spawning at a rate of about 10%. So we have a 40 pound straw bale. We're gonna put four pounds of spawn into it, so about 10%. You can go anywhere from 5% to 10% is a good rate for straw. So we just do a little sprinkle, you don't have to do too much. Just take a little handful, about half a handful per layer. Because what we're gonna do is just kinda add a little layer, add more straw, Add another layer of spawn and just work our way up until the bucket is completely full. So the brick works well, but we found over time that it's much more efficient to make this kind of custom form that fits the bucket perfectly and allows you to just kind of tamp it with just four or five hits. Really important to compact it all the way around. And you can fit a lot more straw in the bucket than you might think. So it's important to fill the buckets as much as you can to the top and uh, leave as little air space as possible, but leave a little bit, maybe half an inch or an inch. Make sure your lids are nice and clean and I give them a spray down with isopropyl alcohol. And then we'll seal them up. What we found is that a straw bale, a single straw bale, which is about 40 pounds of dry material, will inoculate about five or six buckets. And to do this process, it takes us about half an hour per straw bale to pull it out and inoculate it and get it done to put into the incubation chamber.